At this point in the build process, when you're very close to completion, it can be exciting and challenging. The problem is, you may feel compelled to rush and complete the final components or drive headfirst into a process without thoroughly preparing or understanding its implications. This can lead to consequences that stall progress and leave you with suboptimal results. There's still a lot of surface preparations to be done before finishing. To minimize the time and effort required for this work, it's essential to take a few steps beforehand. And exactly what those steps are can vary quite a lot. When it comes to most jobs, taking the slower route can often be faster in the long run. Although counterintuitive, it's a process that becomes very apparent as you gain experience with detailed projects like this one. It can prevent the need for rework and avoid problems that require extra labor. In one way or another, we all learn these lessons. And if possible, take my advice and slow down to work more efficiently. Make fewer mistakes, and in the end, complete your projects with a higher degree of satisfaction. I have a few incidental parts to make before we get to surface preparation. I'll need to create stock for the CNC milling, prepare for pour filling, and finish prep, along with the parts we've already completed. My standard method for developing CAM involves using stock dimensions defined in the manufacturing environment to create technical drawings. Then I mill rough lumber to the stock dimensions and thicknesses, making the parts easy to produce. Next, I perform a boring operation for the attaching hardware, followed by cutting the profile and angle with my V-carving tool. Some engraving is done on the final piece, after which mother of pearl powder can be applied and soaked in CA glue. Once it's hardened, it can be sanded flush. It's important to accept you'll be dealing with something sticky or messy at this stage, so it's best to put on the gloves and get started. Preparing your workspace can be useful, and I strongly recommend it. Not only is it necessary for video making, but it also helps create a fresh start and encourages good things to happen. There are many types of pore fillers available, 
but I found one that I prefer for several reasons. I use Zepoxy finishing resin for my woodworking projects. I pay for this product myself because I find it relatively easy to work with and it creates a hard, durable structure that can be sanded quickly. Additionally, it works well with the deep pour woods that I prefer. This creates a resonant structure that produces the tone I'm looking for without absorbing too much energy. This process, like any, requires iteration. Don't even attempt perfection. Let it come to you over time. Nothing is going to be perfect, and making sure you're enjoying the process is going to keep you going a lot longer than torturing yourself in the beginning. I rough sand with 80 to 120 grit and go down to 220 and finally 400 for the final surface preparations. The remaining pore filler and a low angle single point light source are used to identify the problem areas. Knowing exactly when to stop is one of the trickiest things, as overdoing it will create flat spots or uneven contours. After we've spent ridiculous amounts of time learning how to design and shape timbers into the shapes we need, the product is finally ready for finish, an art and science blend of its own with profound implications. The physics and chemistry involved are equally appealing, but at the same time, they come with a steep learning curve. But before we get into those complications, we'll need to pour fill and sand back and repeat as many times as necessary. You may have noticed that I intentionally avoid sanding surfaces too much when working on this instrument. This is because all surfaces will require pore filling and sanding back later on. Sanding too much now would be a wasted effort, so I save the final sanding for after the pore filling process. The pore filler also helps to highlight any little scratches, which makes it a lot easier to focus on specific areas that need more attention. This saves time in the long run. I still use the trusted method of low angle single point light sources to identify tiny scratches, but I have found that using the pore filler method reduces the number of scratches that need attention during the final sanding. With the variety of work and the implications that impact quality to such a significant degree, this stage in the build of any instrument is challenging and at the same time very exciting to the builder. There are a number of hurdles to clear, but the complete functional instrument is in sight and seems just a bit closer than it really is. The work becomes increasingly more detailed and the consequences and risks increase. If you're anything like me, there's a certain amount of dread attached to this stage of the process, and it's not all about the copious amounts of sanding and dust involved. The more efficient this work is, the better and thinner finish requirements will be. But we'll get into that in the next video. Breaking this process down into its basic elements and analyzing them is just something I like to do. I enjoy this process and it's the basis of why I enjoy making these videos so much. The details that I learn about and attempt to communicate here may seem a bit over the top, but the engineering, material properties, and manufacturing techniques used in the industry and modified and manipulated in small shops to fit each maker's needs are an endless source of fascinating topics for me, and I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. So thanks for watching and keep up the top-notch sanding. And don't get discouraged by the avalanche of detail that seems so intimidating at this stage of your build.